Vito and Nathan, go ahead and roleplay as little or as long as you'd like. Just let me get close enough to the screen so I can just stand girl. All right, so... Uh, this is awkward. A little, yeah. I'll, I'll grant that, yeah. But this... This hand, you know, um, I mean, I, I, I know Sol is o- okay with it, into it. Um, I would be too. I, uh, I mean, Solarians don't really marry. We have contracts nothing and then again those contracts have nothing to do with relationships so the wedding is a thing but I wouldn't really call our relationship strictly monogamous so yeah um, mom gave me a little bit of a how do I put it it gave me a little bit of a crash course in how you know, the Turian government handles marriages and relationships and all that. A lot of the time it's for stature or making your way up the hierarchy or whatever else. Um, Mom was married for a few years. Didn't have any kids. Turns out she was infertile. And after which he divorced her and went after a younger woman. Um, yeah, that was... Uh, she told me that one night when she had a bit too much brandy, but, you know, it, I I guess it's, you know, it's fine, really. You know, she found happiness in her job instead and moved on. Um, and I, I was in a, rela- a long-term relationship with... Fred Elvron Cree, as I'm sure you know. Um, and the end of that relationship turned very toxic. The last year of that relationship wasn't the healthiest for me, especially. Um, I won't go into too much detail uh, unless you get to hear more. Would you? If you feel comfortable enough to share. You don't have to. It's a very public space. I think I'll keep it to the minimum for now. But, um... We broke up, and... It's been about a year now. Um, I don't know if I'm physically or emotionally prepared for a relationship. Especially after... Trebia and everything else. It's just, you know, um, I'd like to try it, though. You know, you and Solaric are very nice people. You know, Solaric did call me a courtesan, but I won't hold it against him uh, when we first met. So, let's leave it open for a moment. You know, um, when this is all done, or when we go back to the Citadel, we'll you and I can sit down with Solaric, and we can see. Of course. The door is always open, Nathan. Thank you. Now, are you comfortable? Like, you're, you're kind of sitting on my, you know, knees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Just... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Don't worry. We'd better go find everybody else before they go burn Ilium down. That would be a good idea. So Nathan's going to stand up and say, Pip, Qualen, we're uh, we're going to go find everybody else before they burn down the whole city. You guys uh, good for there for a bit longer? Pip and Qualen, Pip and Qualen give you a thumbs up is what I said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so Nathan will leave and get dressed and go find everybody else. Okay, cool. So, we finish 
a wonderful outing in the springs what is you guys's next destination are you guys leaving and if so then we obviously have to go get if you need to go get um stand back then you probably should do that first yeah. but then are you guys going somewhere um i think well besides going to go get shit faced um if i could have like a little moment out of character i mean in character uh because dia did say she wanted to get shit faced so shit so she's probably they're probably uh, her the trio of them are probably dia's like leading them to a bar um, and as they're going along, Gray, she's probably going to see, like, through the stores, like, maybe some fashions and, like, stuff, like, of uh, uh, women's clothing and all that. And she'd probably have, like, look herself in the mirror. And, like, through the mirror, she'd see a silhouette of herself in those clothing. And she's probably... Uh, and she's probably going to say... Uh, yeah. Maybe. And then heads on out. So you're gonna go out drinking with Zajeri? Yeah, Zajeri, and she brought Indy along. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have you have your girls' night out. Roll an insight, Indy and Zajeri. Uh, sorry, Indy and Dia. Okay, insight. I have really a plus seven. I only have a fucking ten. Son of a bitch. So I'm all I'm going to say is um, wait 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 get, can I actually, re -roll? you guys get get an advantage oh. roll again get oh, an okay. advantage okay. get an advantage was, on that because I, I feel like renegade point <laughs> okay there you go <laughs> oh. all right so you both will notice this so while you guys are out drinking you're just gonna be talking stuff and I'm gonna say that. Um, Zadreri clearly seems to enjoy you guys' company. And I will say that both Gimmick and Dia will notice that Zadreri seems to... The way that her body language is after she's had several drinks. And for a Vorcha, she needs several, several drinks. But... The way that her body language is, you kind of catch something that could be interpreted as her seeming interested in Dia. It could be interpreted as that. Though, of course, she's also had a lot to drink, but... <clears throat> so, Dia, did you tell us who are you interested in? Out of character. Damn you, Astra. Screw you, bastard. <laughs> no. Um, yes, that's a very good point. Yeah. You should tell us who you uh, are interested in. Oh, great. It, well, it was bound to head back to me eventually. Um, well, before you answer, let me make something a little clear, since I was never really, like, specific about it before, and I figure it's safe for me to tell you guys. So, yeah, I've been talking with Otto as well, but I'm not gonna lie, Nathan intrigues me too. He's just never really did anything other than his normal flirtatious self, which he does to everybody. Yeah, that's true. But, um, I mean, I just like playing hard to get. And the little comment I said about the bits, while true, it doesn't mean that I'm uninterested. It's just, you know, it's just there. It's, it's just there. Well, I saw this show about, um, there were these humans that were talking about aliens and it was a it was a sitcom and they were talking about alien bits and they were talking about how weird alien bits are compared to their bits and but uh, I, uh it turns out that a lot of human women find men's bits well 
straight women finds straight males bits kind of weird and slightly off-putting too but it doesn't mean that they're not interested it just means it's weird out of character um there was an episode i remember um watching in the 90s blossom if you guys ever know about blossom there was a message there was an episode in blossom and it was six and blossom they were talking about um the naked male body at some point and I think it was like Blossom or Six had never actually seen one in person before, like the naked bits of a man in person. And so one of them asked the other, what, what was it like? And they were like, it was honestly kind of weird. It was like an undecorated Christmas tree. <laughs> and so I'm, as a gay man, I actually find male bits kind of I don't find it attractive physically. It's just there. So it's like I'm indifferent to them, even though I obviously have my own bits. But like, <laughs> I wouldn't say that I'm attracted to anything below the waist. Everything I'm attracted to is above the waist, mm. but I'm still gay and I'm still clearly attracted to men. It's just that part of a male is like, doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. So that's so when I'm, ex to... so that's sort of how, how, um, how uh, Zadreri is explaining her comment about bits, about the bits. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Well, that's fair, girl. That's fair. Like, uh, I can I, I can understand that. For me personally, um, I'm more. For me, it is the bits, and well, it's the entire package, really. Um, you know, um, and the, uh, uh, well, for, I, I enjoy the entire package. Um, and for me, like, um, for guys' bodies, it's, it's the entire thing for me. Um, for women, I, I can appreciate them, right? But I enjoy the entire body. But for, for me, women, I appreciate them and, and admire them. I've only, for me, my role models have always been women, um, girls, for me, my superheroes, <laughs> Sam, um, what were always for, you know, we're always women. Uh, so that, that was my experience. And for me, as I was growing up, for me, it was just because I modeled after them so much, I was like, hey, you know what? Girls like guys. I like guys. This is great. That's that was sort of my growing up experience. Because I've always been that uh, that that little gay kid who was so obviously gay that it hurt. Mm -hmm. Out of character. This is Dia, subtly letting out the information that she's not interested in anyone. Not in anyone, but like she, because she she rolled the whole what what Sajari was putting out, oh. and she's like ah. subtly injecting yeah. that she's right, right, gay. right. Okay, cool. She's trying to be nice about it, but yeah, yeah. She she seems to be okay with that information. She seems to understand what you're saying, and she doesn't seem to be like like hurt by it. So mm -hmm. I understand um, that. <laughs> Dio was also gonna add, you know. What was brought up in the hot springs, but you know, maybe I've drunk too much vodka, but like, you know, that's a good consideration. So, who are you interested in then? That's so hard because all the guys on our ship are so good looking. <laughs> um, Nathan is nice, he's obviously very kind very kind-hearted with all his charities and whatnot but at the same time i feel like i feel like i can't offer him what he needs like he's nice and all but i feel like what i have to offer myself as a person i can't really do that for him for Vito, on the other hand he's married even i wouldn't um and even though he's a lovely person um, for Kovalin, 
Kovalin is cute, but he's a little bit too conservative family for my tastes. What well, did you ever think about that? Uh, what did you ever think about that Jules guy, though? Uh, Dia just gives like a little smile. She's like, he's nice as well. I haven't got the chance to speak to him as often. Probably doesn't like me because I fucked up his entire ship. Yeah, that probably wouldn't be a good um, first impression. But what I was saying is we might be talking to him more very soon. That's true. That's very true. We'll see. Worst comes to worst, I can always, I can always pay 150 to a uh, to a, a red boy. Fair enough. Hey, and you also have Augie's number, technically. That is true. That is true. Do I want to get involved in that whole drama with Vito and Augie and Nathan? Why not? No, that's true. Why not? He's his own person. <laughs> just because they happen to have, they just because they happen to be related to each other shouldn't matter. That's at true. Least, that's I don't true. think so. At least. You know what? You know what? Worst comes to worst, I have a five way with everyone. <laughs> I'm. I'm not. Like I said, I don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> worst comes to worst, I have to see. I'm not sure. Well. Ladies, she says as she um, gets you guys another shot. To us women who are here to keep all of the boys in check. Yes, we're the only, we're literally the only reasonable ones on this entire fucking ship. Here, here. <laughs> they clink glasses. <laughs> they drink. The nice thing about, um, about Gimmick is that he can consume as much alcohol as he wants and it's not going to affect him whatsoever. Oh, cool! Nice <laughs> You're not. You can't get drunk. So yeah, <laughs> can you at least uh, like enjoy the buzz and the flavor and stuff? Uh, at this point, after a few bottles, yeah, Dia is totally that one bitch who goes wow. <laughs> to answer to answer, uh, Mikey, the flavor, yes, his his body was designed to appreciate how things taste, but it. I don't think you would have to program something in there that would actually like get him drunk off of alcohol. That's something that you need to add in. So it'd be more complicated to do that. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's uh, a chemical reaction to your biological cells, not, you know, a electrical response to things. So. Gimmick. Gimmick. Okay. So how the hell are you not on the floor? When you haven't drunk shit before. Well, I don't think I can get drunk. Can you describe it? <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm seeing high 15s, five fours of you. Oh my god. Oh that... my. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did you just puke on gimmick? <laughs> on yeah, just on like indie? Alright. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got a party foul. Well, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm just so oh. sorry. Indy, consider yourself officially, officially christened. You've just been baptized into the world of drunkness. But these are my only clothes. <laughs> well. Yeah is definitely doing that uncomfortably closely where she's like all over your shoulder like you know indy i think you're very cute but you gotta learn to shut up bitch <laughs> just be glad that vodka is clear yeah i haven't gotten this shit face in a week oh oh i don't know why i didn't talk with you more because you seem really fun apart from the puking part <laughs> Yeah, and the fact that now you are in a body that can smell, oh, it's, yeah. it's definitely <laughs> off-putting. It's very off-putting now that you can smell things. Well, you know, I'm like those guys. I have no, I know how to have a good time. You know what? Let's go, go, go get Stan. Stan! All right. 
so it's pretty late at night, so you probably won't be able to get Stan this moment. But the next day, <laughs> you will be able to get Stan. And are you just going to get Stan by yourself again, Dia? He will. Well, I'm going to say this. The, your brother will call, and he will explain to you that he's gotten some really interesting information in the last 24 hours, and that if you want to bring the whole group with you so he can explain it all to them, you may, or you could just leave him behind, but he's got a lot of interesting information. Uh, Dia's probably going to be like, with a headache. Okay, guys, my brother just called me. Let's go visit him at his lab. Okay, let's go. Should we, like, grab you some food? Maybe, like, some medication on the way there? Y yes, some some tersprin, please. Yeah. Some tersprin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you get some tersprin. <laughs> And you guys will make your way to Binary Helix. Now, is it just going to be the four of you, or are you also bringing along other NPCs besides Stan with you? I would Let's say just... bring Koala. I mean, I say bring them all. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You'll bring them all. That's fine. You will see Alan, and you'll say, "Pleased to meet all of you." So you're all a part of uh, my brother's team, I guess. Some yeah. revolution. Yeah. That's yeah. us. I know we look like a horrible mess, but you know what? We can actually do it. I mean, <laughs> she Dia was out drinking last night, so that's just you know. I'm always <laughs> out drinking. Well, I think I recommend you guys sit down because I've got a lot of information to dump on you. Okay. I put it all in a drive, but I thought I would do a little bit of show and tell. Sure. So I was able to take some time analyzing what uh, at least has been referred to as Red Lyrium. At least that's the name that was given to me by uh, Miss Isla Ra Aya Rowlett. They also sent, uh, sent over samples of this Red Lyrium to our office as well, along with some information that they had doing some investigation on all of these disappearing biotics. So... Let me start by talking about what we are seeing when we're looking through the red lyrium. Let's talk about dark matter and dark energy. So, as you all know, dark energy comes from mass effect fields, things of that nature. Dark matter is something a little bit separate in that the theory is that only about 22% of all matter in the universe is matter that we actually perceive with our senses. Which means there is another 74-ish percent of matter out there that we just have no way of seeing, feeling, tasting. But apparently it, the theory is it makes up that universe. So, somehow this Lyrium is a window into seeing that other 74%. Which means that somehow this phenomenon is converting people into dark matter. Essentially, think of them turning into... What's the best way to describe it? It's not really going into a different universe because they're not going into a new universe. It's still the same universe. They're just in a different state of being that we can't perceive. But somehow we can see it through this. So it's like the end of 2001, A Space Odyssey. Uh, out of character, baby. I'm not aware. I'm not familiar with <laughs> the ending of that. But if that's what it is, then that's what it is. <laughs> it's, um, it's like... You know uh, how water changes to mist it's just like people are changing it to something we can't see yes and i guess a lot of the symptoms we've been collecting people who have been um affected by this so far after all the tests that i've run i've run this red lyrium exposed to uh cells that are biotic biotic cells and cells of non-biotics it does seem to only affect 
biotics. I don't think that this exposure to this red lyrium seems to have any ill effects on non-biotics. Then again, I've only been observing for the last 24 hours. So take that as you will. Well, here's the million dollar question. How do we get those people, you know, out of their higher state of being? I don't know if we can, is my answer. Okay. I don't know if we can. Again, this is just my research of the last 24 hours. So I don't know yet. Okay. What I do know is that there are a lot of very distinct information on what symptoms people have prior to them disappearing. People feeling like something's touching them, grabbing him in various places, and that's probably because they are actually sensing, feeling the dark matter around them. Maybe even beings that are trapped in that dark matter. They have dreams Wait. of drowning in darkness. So yes. you're saying there is shit we can't see, invisible shit. Exactly. Like monsters. Oh, great. I don't know about monsters. I'm not sure how that works. What about the singing? That's the other thing is that they keep claiming that there's a humming or singing that they can hear. And it seems like only something biotics can hear. I haven't personally been able to perceive anything singing, but it sounds like they are hearing singing while they're going through this transformation. Is it like a higher frequency noise, maybe, that they start to hear once they start getting ready to, you know, transcend? You can call it noise, but it's not really sound, because again, sound is something that we perceive with our five senses. It's not something that... it doesn't really equate to dark matter. Dark matter doesn't give off a sound. Oh, were you people able to analyze someone before they transcend? to this other state of being? We haven't been able to catch anyone yet, because that requires some volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we could start talking to people at the school if they wish to volunteer as guinea pigs, but that gets really messy, as you can probably guess. Okay, Which is why I've been using cells instead. Well, I have a stupid idea. Mm -hmm. yes. I, well, I don't know about Nathan, but I have, I, I think I'm further along the progression to, you know, disappearing than he is. You want us to test you? Why not? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. And besides, I'm, more, I'm stronger willed than most people, if that's a thing. Yeah, he just said there's... So far, there's no way to go back to the... We can't let you do something like that. No, we just need to... Well, so far... You said you had a nightmare, Dia. So I'm wondering if that nightmare was you experiencing this dark matter world. Well, if that was the dark matter world, it was a very fucked up world. It was like, it was a nightmare come to life, basically. Which would explain why you would have seen th th that um, biotoball player who had disappeared. I mean, yes, no, that would explain that incident happening. Maybe she was reaching you from that realm. I thought she, maybe, or, well, we can try. Maybe we can try, I don't know, connecting to her. She suggests try to have another nightmare. Why not? That would be risky because that could risk you being pulled into the dark matter realm permanently. Well, Adia just goes to give Alan a little pat on the shoulder. That's why I trust you. Yes. No pressure, huh? <laughs> That's not all the information that we gathered. There's more. So, other things that victims of this 
whatever this is seem to be catching. They do seem to be interested in being in direct vicinity of anything that generates dark energy, like biotics or Mass Effect devices, things of that nature. And for some reason, they have a desire to be out in the sun. Not really sure why that's the case. Also, electrical devices seems to bug out a bit. Um, not the lyrium itself, but... Everything it seems, around it? It seems like w the, 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 the reason why a lot of this is happening is because dark energy is reacting to the red lyrium. Uh, sort of like the red lyrium is a catalyst that is making the dark energy involve evolve into something new. And wait, so it's new energy. It's dark energy, but enhanced with this lyrium. I don't know how it works exactly, but when you have that dark energy that's been somehow catalyzed with lyrium, it causes electrical devices around them to bug out, like Flicker, for example. The victims also begin to hallucinate while they're awake. And I think that that kind of explains a lot about what's happening. Seems out like of it's uh, I wanted to ask, uh, did Gimmick, because it's a robot, like, feel something, I, I don't remember, like, the Gimmick, like, bug out or something? No, I don't think Gimmick himself actually bugged out. Oh, okay. He did not bug out. But he did bug out when that Asari grabbed a hold of you, though, if you remember. Oh, okay. Your body bugged out a little bit. Yeah. If you remember. Alan thinks for a moment, and he informs Dia that if she is willing to, he could take a tissue sample from her and do a bit of thorough studying on that sample. It would require him a bit more time to get some more definitive answers from that sample, but maybe, just maybe, he'd be able to gather more information on what could be done about this condition. Uh, we're gonna need to bring someone in though. Um, he, he's gonna make the a, a, a lens out of the out of the red lyrium for us. That would make things incredibly easier. Yeah. You're gonna need someone really skilled at doing something like that because this lyrium is very brittle and cutting it into a lens is gonna require a very deft hand and eye. I know somebody. We know some people. Oh, am I not surprised? And at um, this point, Kualan will say, well, we can continue on to the Citadel or wherever it is else you all think we should go in the meantime. I need to stop off in Thessia and visit David. We can stop by Thessia on the way there, sure. There are quite a few things on the Citadel we need to do, so I have to speak to my husband and there's the whole cure of the Ravenophage too. Oh, yeah. hmm. And we have to find the Pathfinder ship. That we too. can do that once all the testing is done. Yes. I'm, yes. Well, I'm getting the feeling that somehow a ship can't disappear like that, especially in a highly populated area like Ilium. I... I think the lens will come handy. Plus, didn't we give you guys, Zadrari says this to Alan, didn't we give you guys some of that tech, that Angaran tech? Mm, sure, something on there might be able to help track down their ship. Yes, the tech. As I have said, my priority was, my top priority was the Lyrium itself. So 
the tech has sort of been put off into the back burner for the time being, so I could learn all I could in the last 24 hours. I can definitely start looking into that tech soon as well, if you need to know the information. I think in well, terms of priority, because uh, the, the because the light of energy from what Kasash said counteracts dark energy, maybe... You, you think that this. might help cure you? I don't know. It's better than nothing. Either way, I have a death sentence on me. It's either become a guinea pig and go into the world faster or just wait until I head into that world anyways. At least this way I can, you know, maybe have a way back. This substance just defies, its very existence defies the law of physics. I was trying to determine its met its chemical properties and the atoms and electrons within it it's it's all it's all wrong something like this shouldn't even exist in the first place uh, um the information that we got um from miss Rowlett is that this is this is a substance that's almost magical in nature magic <laughs> She mentioned that. She mentioned about it being magic. Well, I guess if you're talking about something that came from another universe, if someone from another universe came here, they would consider our biotics magic. So oh. I think what's considered magic is relative. Oh, I have an even worse idea. Yes? What? It, well... It, this came from another universe. Maybe those inhabitants of that universe know more. What do you mean? Maybe we should, we should probably ask Aya if she still has contact with them. Exactly. Or if worse comes to worse, we go there ourselves. I don't know about dimension hopping. That just sounds unnecessarily dangerous. Yeah, didn't that cause this in the first place? Yeah, in a it way. It did. Who That's knows true. what else we could bring back by accident. But, Alan, you said that the, the, the dimension stuff could theoretically cause a lot of light energy. Right? In theory, yes. I mean, if possible, maybe we can... If Aya doesn't let us borrow theirs, we can maybe work out our own from Kasaja's and the Angaran's tech. Um, sure. I'm not going to say that I'm going to be able to come up with some dimension hopping thing overnight. Even with these, even with this tech. We got time. That's one thing we do have for the moment. I want to mention to that remember that I told Shayas about the Angaran? Well, maybe hmm. she has some clues by now, because I'm sure that she investigated uh, about it when I told her so that could be another lead That's a very good point, Gimmick <sighs> At any rate um, I'm looking into trying to find a way to stop the transformation to happen in your affected bodies. But again, it's that's going to take some time. Oh, How's Stan well, treating you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stan? Actually, Stan's been doing well. He actually asked to come and see if he could visit some of his old friends and... Uh, He's been um, entertaining them. Huh. Oh no! So. No, he isn't. Oh, he isn't what? He he isn't trying to be Superman or something, right? Well, um, actually, um, oh no! He show he like turns um, a monitor to your direction so you can like see what's happening in the next room, and you see this whole like small army of collectors 
doing like acrobatic flips and jumping around. Um, and they've some bunch of them like have like blankets and tablecloths wrapped around their necks like capes. And they're all like doing all these jumps and tricks and it's like a big circus. Is there a comms <laughs> unit in there? Yeah, sure. This is the, uh, so incredible. Like, I'm gonna how do I turn this the mic on? Uh, he'll show you. Okay. You bastards, you better take down those goddamn capes. Stan, I'm gonna kick your fucking <laughs> ass when I see you, you little shit. <laughs> oh do you let them have fun? Yeah, it looks like they're having fun. Let them at it. There, there shall be no fun without my proper costuming involved. No fun allowed. <laughs> he, is, he is really turning into my auntie. No fun allowed. <laughs> he even approached the yes, brother. Do you know if Stan has like a girlfriend or something like that? <laughs> girlfriend? Stan's never mentioned a girlfriend. Where, what have you been doing with him while you oh, had nothing. him? I, I yeah. just... <laughs> Give me looks a bit worried. <laughs> I didn't even know that that they could have a sex drive. Oh, he has a sex drive. Oh my god, that little shit. It was rubbing up and down. On you? Maybe not, not on me. I would I'm call her. it infatuation. <laughs> I wouldn't call that infatuation. I'd call that like, like, like it's it, it was a stick. Okay, well that's good to know. I will add that in as another item to monitor. All right. Anything else you want to talk or ask Alan about before you leave? Okay. We'll keep you up to date. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So I think Nathan wanted to go visit David and Thessia. Yes. All right. Fast forward. You guys will make your way over to Thessia, and you will go to the Salo, Salo Vera's residence once again. And the door will be answered by a quarian... That's not Sallow, but the Quarian is in sort of like a butler's suit, kind of, butler's uniform. And then the uh, the Quarian asks, may I help you? Yes, I'm here to see David Archer, Nathan Callahan. Uh, you'll hear a voice from behind, a female voice say, who is it? Oh, it's all of you. And you see that it is Nilu. Oh, hi, Nilu. Nilu. How have you been? I am doing all right. Uh, are you here to see Salo? He actually ended up leaving uh, yesterday for a very important uh, meeting over in Tochanka. No, no, I'm here to see David. He's in the secret lab. So. Oh, of course. Uh, yes. Um, come right in, please. Please, she says as she... As she um, as you guys file in um, and you guys will make your way into the same lab and uh, you will find David. He is um, currently on some sort of a, he's on a bed and he's got like his a monitor. He's and other things like monitoring his vital signs. His, he still has a heartbeat. He's still breathing. Um, but he's in a coma state at the moment. Give me a minute, guys. And Nathan will approach the bed and uh, take one of David's hands in his own and kneels down next to him. Hey, David. Um, I hope you can hear me. Uh, it's Nathan. When you and I were talking before you volunteered to do this you wanted to say something to me I know what that something was and it's very difficult for me to say this to you David but I don't feel that way about you anymore I 
not that way. So, how how do I say this properly? I feel, David, that there is somebody out there for you. There is people who want you to come back. Myself included, Jack. But there's there is somebody out there for you. There's somebody out there who will love you the way I can't. And you... You were so brave, and you tried so hard to help us, and you did. You saved me, you saved the entire planet of Arun. You, you're a hero. You, you did exactly what you wanted to, David. You saved us. So please, just, just come back to us, please. Okay? And he will hold a hand in his own and just kneel there for a bit. While this is happening, um, uh, Vito and Indy, right? You guys are there, right? Is it v- or is okay? Vito and Indy will um, spot the butler lean over to Nilu and whisper something in her ear. And as soon as that happens, Nila goes over to the big computer and she starts typing some things on the computer. And when you um, go onto the computer, you notice that there's a little blip signal. And Nilu turns back towards um, David and and Nathan, who is now holding onto his hand. And then she looks back onto the monitor, and she says, "Oh, very interesting. That signal wasn't there before." What's going on? She says, the Geth Collective has been trying to search for David's whereabouts or any traces of his whereabouts for the last several days and haven't found anything out of the ordinary until just a few minutes ago. See that there? That's a spot in the Collective that is giving off a very strange, uh, undecipherable signal. Nathan, keep talking. Um. Do you think you can get him? Can you sense anything? Do you think it has anything to do with David himself? Affirmative. We have a match. We think that is where he is. Can you get to him? Negative. Not without assistance. Not without assistance. Um, oh, Salo's not here. I'm not really sure if I should... Oh, but I don't know if this opportunity will still be here when he comes back. Oh, she sounds very like worried about whether or not she should suggest something or not. Nathan just turns around to her. Get me in there, and I'll get him back. It's very risky, though. If you get in there, I don't know that if you'd be able to come back out. He took that risk for me. So, don't argue. Just do it. All right. Well, um, we have uh, three additional pods. And, um, well, she turns towards Gimmick and says, you've been there yourself before if you don't mind going back in and guiding them. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm ready. I, I'm ready to make up for my mistakes. I, I'm in. I'll help. I, I don't know much about technology, but... You don't have to know anything about technology for this to work. You just have to uh, be strong of will. Um, I'm not sure if I feel comfortable with you all doing this, but um, if this is what it takes to save this young man, I'm not going to stop you. Thanks, Qualen. All right. Well, then... um. 
let us make preparations. Um, I um, will have to inform Salo of what we're doing, and he'll just have to forgive me later. So we can, yeah. Nilu is going to get you guys strapped onto a bed as comfortable as possible, and he they are going to. Um, attach all of these devices. There's going to be something that's going to go into your head, similar to David. Um, you, Gimmick, are going to be able to get into the collective on your own the way you did before. But Nathan, Vito, and Dia will go on through this device. Again, similar to when Shepard himself went into the Geth Collective as well. You will enter into the collective this digital world, so to speak, and um, Gimmick will be able to detect where the signal is and will be able to guide you guys there. So you are perceiving things in a way that your mind is able to make sense of this all. Um, and so when you arrive at the signal, there's this the way you see it, percept the way you perceive it, it looks like some sort of weird, glowing, this weird, glowing, sparkly portal of some sort. Oh no! <laughs> and you can hear voices from the portal. Roll a perception. Everyone. Yeah, really. Well, anyone who's in the in the collective, ah. roll a perception. I rolled a natural one. I'm going to use <laughs> power. Go ahead. Wait, perception. I don't want you to go near David. Oh my god. <laughs> Why do we roll Hot. so low? <laughs> Hot garbage. Okay. okay, it's average. Um, yeah, roll. <laughs> I rolled an eleven. Eight. Did you use guidance? Is that what happened? What was happening? Well, I I kind of use a renegade point to re-roll, or how does? If you want to. Okay. I use a renegade point and roll again. Okay, that's Wait. better. Okay, so Nathan, you're able to hear someone spouting square roots. It's very faint, but you can hear someone spouting square roots. Um, Vito, in addition to that, can hear other voices, but it's hard to make out what those voices are saying. It's really, really hard. And for um, Gimmick, you can hear voice go, Pika? Pika, Pika? Pika, Pika, Pika? Jarzard. Balma! Balma! Is what you're hearing. It doesn't make any sense to you. It doesn't make any sense. Oh. <laughs> you bugger! I, I can going hear to... him. Is that way? But there's other he's noises. Start shouting into the into the portal, like David, can you hear me? Respond if you can hear me, please. Uh, you yell out, and uh, whatever is mumbling the um, the square roots doesn't seem to be stopping. It's continuing though. The square roots continue to be spouted, but it doesn't seem to be responding to you. Ooh. Maybe we have to go through. Are you guys... <laughs> I mean, you don't right. have to, but um, <laughs> you don't have to go in, but... I'm going to go in and look for him. You can yeah. stay here if you want. Nathan is already gone. He just turns around. Oh, okay. Goes. He's just gone. Oh. He's already there. He's already in the portal. All right. Follow the second hubby. <laughs> this is crazy. And Vito walks in. Okay. And you all go in. Yeah. There's a big flash of light. You start seeing a whole bunch of ones and zeros. And then the last thing you hear before we end the session is... <laughs> oh. And we'll end the session That's there. That's how it happens. Oh my god.